Right. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Carlo. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Telcred. And Telcred is a Swedish startup company. Uh, Sweden is a very uh, dark and cold place this time of the year, so I really appreciate to be here in Tel Aviv and Israel. It's the first time for me, so fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I'm here with a whole group of other European startups, many of which are cheering me on from first row here. Thanks for that, guys. Uh, we're here for something called Startup Biscamp uh, for 10 days, uh, invited by the city of Tel Aviv. And I'd like to start off by sharing an experience I had with you uh, when I came here from the airport. I arrived at the airport a few days ago, and uh, no problem there. I took a taxi. We're all staying in an apartment together. I arrived at the apartment, and there was a guy who was, was supposed to meet me there and give me the key to the apartment. The only problem was he wasn't there because he had gone out to dinner with some of the other participants who arrived a bit earlier. So I had to wait. And then I waited a bit more, and I waited, and I waited a bit more. Now, this little story illustrates pretty well the problem that we are trying to solve at Telcred. And that problem is key management. This, this access control technology has been around more or less in the same form for several hundred years, longer than that. And it is characterized by two major flaws, delays, as we just saw, and poor security. Keys are easy to copy, people lose them, they borrow them to each other, and after a while you have to make new ones, you forget how many you have, and after all it just becomes a big mess, and then you have to change the lock. I think all of you who have ever tried to manage a set of keys for a group of people or a building know what I'm talking about. Now the good business opportunity for us is that big companies also have this problem. Let's take a couple of examples. Telecom infrastructure, mobile network infrastructure, power companies, shipping. All these industries and many, many more rely on traditional metal keys to protect their core assets. And they have all these problems of poor uh, productivity, delays, and poor security that I just described. So what can we do about that? Is this the solution, this nice access control system we have in our office? Unfortunately not, or fortunate for us, because that system actually looks like this. Every door in a traditional access control system is wired up to some central administrative system through a series of cables and networks and boxes and God knows what. And it's just not an economically viable or sometimes even technically feasible solution for the type of industries I just described. So what can we do instead? Well, we at attack the problem from a different angle. So instead of me telling the door who I am and leaving it up to the door to know whether I should be allowed to enter or not, our solution works in the way that I carry my own access rights with me. You could very well describe it that I have something like a digital ticket. And that ticket tells the door which doors I am allowed to open. So the door only needs to know about its own identity and the current time. And that the time, it has a clock, and the, its own identity doesn't change over time. So it can work uh, offline or standalone. So what is this ticket? We use a technology uh, that's been around for a couple of years, but it's now actually starting to get out into the market. It's called NFC, which stands for Near Field Communications. It's, uh, it was originally developed for uh, mobile payments. Uh, so it's, it was designed and developed to allow your mobile phone to replace your payment cards in your wallet, your Visa card, your MasterCard, or whatever you use. So it's got all the necessary characteristics to develop solutions with strong security, because that's what the payment industry requires. And that's something we can use uh, to develop this system of digital tickets. It's a perfect solution for distributing and storing a digital ticket which can then be provided to the lock. So we're a product company. We actually make hardware, which is a bit unusual in this group. 
uh, and, and the software that goes with it. So the products are an administrative system, obviously based in the cloud, accessible through the web, and then uh, different hardware configurations that control the actual lock. We don't make the actual locks, but we make the readers and the controller, uh, control units that tells the lock whether it should open or not. Uh, what you see here, the lock in this picture, is uh, our current prototype, and it's uh, actually being used. And uh, I'll show you how it works. So uh, first of all, we show the operation when I don't have a valid ticket on my phone. And uh, this is an add-on to a traditional, very usual uh, Scandinavian style mechanical lock. So the, uh, the lock didn't open here. Now I will present it. Uh, you don't see this, but now I sent a new ticket to my phone, which has the necessary access rights on it to open this specific lock. And after a little while, I can push down the handle and open the lock. The handle action is just to save battery. There's, uh, to, so the batteries are only used for the processing and to make the decision. And then there's a small switch that will move and allow me to lock or unlock uh, by just moving uh, the handle. So we're currently at the stage where we are deploying this solution. We've had it running for two months. Uh, it's a joint project with Ericsson for some of the NFC stuff and with KTH, which is the University of Technology in Stockholm. So we have a group of about five, six staff and 30 students that are now using this on a daily basis since a couple of months. It's been working extremely well. We've hardly had any problems at all. And um, we're looking to launch commercially sometime first half next year and with a more industrialized product than we have now and we'll also be seeking funding for that. Thank you. Working? Working. Yeah, working. So um, I want to be a better customer in Israel. I need it for my home. Um, what do I do with an Apple product, like a, an iPhone, which doesn't have NFC? Well, uh, there are two answers to that question. The first one is that for that specific reason, we have chosen to target enterprise customers first. So, and typically the end user of the handset will be a service technician going to a site to do some technical maintenance or an upgrade or something like that. Eventually, this technology will be in almost all phones, and then also the residential market is a big market opportunity. The second part of the answer is that when you use NFC in what's called secure mode, or also called card emulation mode, the phone actually pretends that it's a contactless smart card. That means that you can actually use smart cards as, as well. You're not relying on having phones. So for this pilot we're using now, most of the people today are actually using contactless smart cards. So that's, uh, but, but obviously we'll want more and more of them to have NFC phones. But the lock doesn't know if it's talking to a smart card or a phone. They look exactly the same, so it's future-proof in that sense. I have a sort of minor question, but it's, uh, it could be a problem. What ha what's the battery life, and what happens when the battery of the controller dies? Uh, the battery life in this specific product is uh, a couple of hundred openings, so it's not uh, suitable for use where you open it ten times per day. Then you need an electric lock which has power from the mains. Uh, we, we read the battery voltage and we get the logs back from the lock, uh, from the phone. It, it, with a bit of delay, so next time it's getting a new ticket, it's also transporting logs from the logs it has been interacting with. And you also get a signal, there's a beeper that tells you as a user that now the battery is starting to become low. But if you're running it on batteries, that, that, that will always be a problem and you will have to change them at some point. This solution is not only for battery operated locks, this is one physical implementation. We're also putting it on entrance doors where we supply the voltage from you know, the normal electricity grid and then you don't have that problem. So it really depends on the a shipping container would obviously need some battery solution, but an entrance door to a facility where you have electricity, maybe you put in place an electric lock that you actually connect to the electrical network. Hi. Good, Hi. Pre good presentation. Welcome to sunny Tel Aviv. Happy, Thank you. Happy to have you with us. Thanks. Um, just uh, thinking uh, two separate questions. One of them is, if you could please walk us through the, the business assumptions 
who is selling, who is distributing, who is in caring with market education and uh, overall marketing activities, and what is your role within the, whole, the, the overall local ecosystem? And then I have another follow-up question. Okay. So our role at this point is to be a product company. So we develop the, uh, the, the physical product and the software that's needed to administer it. And then at, at this point in our development, we mostly do direct sales. So we talk directly to the companies that are going to be the users of our products. If we want to continue uh, going that route, we'll have to build up a network of distributors and integrators and so on. So we'll sell our solution just like you sell locks and other types of access control solutions on the market today. Now the other option, which I'm sort of in favor of, is to uh, go with an OEM strategy where you, you prove yourself with a couple of customers, but then you license the t technology to other companies who are already in the business of access control and they have the market channels and the brand name and so on to get this out onto the global market much, much faster than we would be able to do. But I still think we need to prove ourselves first with a couple of real implementations. Uh, and that uh, makes a lot of sense. Taking this to the future, five, seven, ten years from now, uh, I'm wondering what your vision is on the access control market as it relates to this specific product. For example, do you see access control, physical access control companies developing standards so that you can leverage this? You can hope then that you will be able to concentrate on software, on control, remote management, and so on. Or will you always have to be the one who produces the hardware components and then distributing them and hoping that users will adapt and so on? Uh, no, we wouldn't have to produce the hardware. I mean, that, that we're happy to let someone else do. And in terms of standards, we want, I mean, if you're talking long term, the, the, the big uh, lottery ticket here is if you, you can actually own the standard for offline access control. Because there is no good standard in that area. I mean, there's, there's always many standards in technology, but on the lower layer, there are standards. I mean, there's NFC and there's how you talk to a smart card, and there are a lot of standards around this. But what is a ticket? What does it look like? What fields does it contain? This is something where I think we're way ahead of our competitors, including some all the really big companies in access control. So that's what I think is one very interesting opportunity is to really establish a standard for how to do offline access control in a very powerful and very secure way, and then to license that to other companies and, and own the standard for that specific segment of the market, which I must say is a very big segment because today, Access control systems are used in very few places compared to the potential. I mean, it's, it's a pretty expensive solution, so typically you put it on entrance doors to maybe this type of building or a university or an office building or something like that, but you don't use it on the doors inside the building, you don't use it on lockers, you don't use it on cabinets, you don't use it on residential doors, and all this type of infrastructure facilities that I showed before. So. There are so many locks in the door, and it's just a tiny percentage of them that are equipped with some type of electronic access control t today. So what we're trying to do is really to make, to broaden the market for access control solutions by making them less expensive to install and maintain. Uh, when you think about uh, prospective customer shopping for an access control system, what do you think about what's important for them, what's not important for them, and how do you differentiate yourself in the, in the buying process? Why would they choose you versus whatever other alternative they have? There's really two types of customers in this context. One is the customer who is shopping for an access control system. That wouldn't typically be one of the companies I showed you before. It would be more maybe an office building or a real estate owner that has an old system and they need to put in place a new one or they're building a new house and they want to have an access control system in it. We can play in that market also, and we do. And then uh, our proposition is that we have a system which is more flexible and less costly than the established solutions. But to be perfectly honest, our competitive advantage is not as strong as if we would talk about you know, shipping containers or something else where uh, current access control systems are not an option, so these customers are not considering them. So then you really have to uh, yeah, you have to educate the customers about that this opportunity exists and try to, uh, they, they're always very aware of all the problems they have with traditional keys, but then of course they need to look at their ROI and what's the investment, is it worth it and so on. So that's uh, in a way a tougher sell even though our uh, competitive advantage is stronger. Thank you very much. Thank you.
And uh, the next startup is Work With Me.